All right, guys, I got a lot of questions about the ADX Supermax, and I did so much time uh, in the hole. You guys wanted to hear some of that uh, story, and uh, I think it's appropriate time for me to talk about it. And when I got busted in February of 2000, I got uh, indicted again with the feds on a mirror case, and uh, I eventually got sentenced to 20 years with the feds. So I'll take it from and 19 years with the state. I'll take it from there. And uh, I started the bid off where they put me in the hole, a maximum security situation, that I was going to be in the hole. I was in the hole for six and a half years straight. If I moved from one place to another, I was in the hole. If I moved again, I was in the hole. So I was always in the hole, always there. At one point, after about a year, I went to uh, the ADX Supermax in Colorado. This was a prison made for inmates who they lose control of. They're killing people in other prisons. They don't know how to manage them. They don't know what to do with them. This is where you end up. This is the max, the super max. So I went there and uh, it was incredible. I mean, you had a 12 inch black and white TV with a cable. There was no sound. You'd have to plug the cable into it, and then you wear, you wear your earphones, and you can listen. There's a shower in the, in the room. There's a concrete slab coming out of the wall that give you a plastic mattress that's about an inch thick, if that. No pillow. And you would just stay in this room. Your food would come, you'd come, there was a steel door with a slot. They open the slot, they stick it through. Three feet back, there's a row of bars. So that three foot section is a safe section for them to come in and you're still behind bars. So a guard or somebody could come in that safety zone, and you can't even touch the bars. If you put your hands on the bars, the guard hits you with a baton. They all carry a baton. When they come in, let's say somebody's a counselor, so they would come in and then there's a guard standing behind them with a baton, a guard standing to the right with a baton. And they never talked to you, they'll whack you right in the hand. And uh, I knew when I was there, this was hell. Your food would be made in another prison. They would make it, they would put it in these heaters, and they would put it in a truck, bring it to the prison, roll it in, and uh, it would sit in the hallway for a while, and then they would distribute it. Maybe it would sit for an hour and a half from start to finish before it got to you. So even this slop that they were making was laying for an hour and a half, sometimes two hours before you even got it. The place was literally soundproof. Reason why it's underground. Once or twice when I went in the yard for recreation, and uh, that's very, very limited, there's a very high wall, 20 feet, maybe more. Now, on the outside, when you're coming in, you can't see this wall. The dirt comes right up to the top of the wall. So you're actually 20 feet below ground. You're underground. The silence is deafening. 
There's no inmates across from one another. It's just one row of cells. There is literally no communication between us. You make one call a month. After a year, if you got good behavior, the most you can get is two calls a month. They're recorded like any other prison. The only thing is your call in this prison, there's a guy listening live and he's got his finger on a button. Anything he doesn't like, he hits the button. Your call is done. It's hard to even explain the loneliness and what it's like. Occasionally you would hear like a bombs go off, boom. Those are concussion bombs. They lose control of somebody loses their, their patience or whatever, goes nuts. They'll throw this concussion bomb in, then they all come rushing in with batons and you've had it. They'll bust you up. They don't play games here. If you go in the yard, we're told, and they yell to you, Gravano, hit the floor. If you don't hit the floor, they'll say it again. You'll never hear it the third time. If you're in a bullshit fight, they will shoot you with a rubber bullet. If you have a shank, which is a homemade knife or something or a weapon, they will shoot you with a regular bullet. No questions asked, no compromise, no nothing. You know what the situation is when you go into that yard. Everything is a strip search. When you come out of that cell, you're stripped, completely nude, bending over, coughing so nothing's up in your butt. And if they want, they could actually, they call it a cavity search. If they think something is wrong, they could actually, with rubber gloves, they could put your finger up your ass to see if you're carrying a, a shank because that's how it's transformed from your cell to the yard. It's so many things that go on in this place. It's literally insane. My ex-wife came up on a visit once. It's the only visit I got. It's the only visit I wanted. Because when she came up, she was in a room. The glass was this thick and between us, very thick. And there was a phone. So you couldn't hear each other. Over her head, there was a camera looking at me. Over my head, there's a camera looking at her. And you have to use the phone to talk. You can't touch. You can't do anything. She can go back in a room where they have commissary. They have machines with ice cream or potato chips or bullshit, things like that. On that visit, a guard came and gave me a dish. He opened the slot, gave me my food. I put it on the little counter in front of me, and I told him, bro, there's no utensils in here. He says, eat with your hands. So I was sitting there talking to her while she's eating potato chips and drinking the soda, and I'm eating with my hands like a fucking animal. I felt like an animal. There's a button, I hit the button, a female guard came. And I says, I gotta go to the bathroom. Okay, cuff up. Put my hands through the slot backwards, she cuffs me up. I have an orange jumpsuit on. And she takes me in the hall, down the hall. There's a cage, regular, regular bullshit cage. You can see right through it. And uh, there's a toilet bowl. No walls around it, no nothing. And she's standing there looking at me. And I said, sweetheart, could you go down the hall? I got to go to the bathroom, bro. She took the cuffs off. I, I said, I got to go to the bathroom. She says, I have to stand and watch. I says, I, I, I got to take a crap, bro. 
You want to watch that? I have to stand and watch. It's the most humiliating thing I ever did in my life. I have never, ever did that in front of a woman in my life. It was humiliating. I don't want to belay that story. I, I did it. I went back into the visiting area. We cuffed up. I went back there. And I told my ex-wife, I said, don't, come, don't ever come back here. And don't let anybody come here. This round trip, this whole visit cost you about $2,000. We just had a $2,000 phone call. And I, I will never do this again. Another thing that struck me it was I was so lonely. It was pathetic. A nurse came. She was a good looking woman. I met her a couple of times. She came to me and she came in that safe space. And she was going to give me a document. She talked to me for a little while. And uh, I guess it was time for her to go. And she went to hand me the paper next to the bars. So when I put my hand to get the paper, I don't know what made me do this, but I grabbed her finger and I literally almost begged her not to leave, to keep talking to me. She said, Sammy, let go of my fingers. There's cameras all over the fucking place. If they're watching this, they'll come in here, they'll beat you to death. Let go. I let go of her finger. I didn't, didn't try to hurt her. I didn't hurt her. I just wanted to talk to someone. She had tears in her fucking eyes when she was talking to me. She says, I understand, Sammy, what you're going through. I just can't believe how long they got you down here like this. I understand. Take a deep breath every once in a while. Do push-ups and sit-ups until you, you want to faint. And then go, go to bed. Go to sleep. Take a nap. Stay strong. You're a strong man. Don't fall apart. I'll never forget her fucking face. And how she felt. She was moved, this woman, had tears in her eyes. She didn't love me, she didn't know me, she didn't, maybe didn't even like me, I don't know. But it, she was moved with her job, with what she was doing. Incredible. You know, I see these programs in Guantanamo Bay, we have terrorists. And they are prisoners there. They have a soccer court. They eat the same meals the military eats. They have better doctors. These are terrorists. These are people who catch Americans and kill them and chop their heads off and do all kinds of fucking weird shit. And the ADX Supermax has got people of every race, and nationality and religion, our people live like that. I will guarantee you every single fucking person in the ADX Supermax would do anything to trade with Guantanamo Bay. They would do whatever you wanted to trade. And we have, I believe it was 400 inmates in that prison. I feel I should talk for them. Everybody who's in there. I feel I should talk to their families. If your family member is in there, try to do something. I'll talk to every fucking senator and congressman. Go there. It's nice and clean and shiny. Get past that. Look at them. And if they fuck up there and you're in real trouble, they put you, they have a hole within the hole. And I once asked the guy, what is that? 
We're in a hole here. What, how, what's, what's this other thing? They have a slab. And there's little hooks where your feet are on the end. And two of them on top. So you'll lay there completely nude. Both of your feet are in those stirrups. Both your hands are. That's where you'll lay on a concrete slab. Oh my God. I never went in there. I was told. What happens when you got to go to the bathroom or something? The guard will come over. Go ahead. Every couple of hours we'll come and hose it, hose it clean. Don't worry about it. Now I'm going to lay in my piss and shit. And for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, wait for you to come with a fucking hose? Oh my God. I says, I don't even know if this is the truth. I don't know if this is even possible. Some of my friends were in there, the gas pipe, the underboss of the Lucchese family was there. Greg Scarpa Jr. was there. The Unabomber was there. There was FBI ex traders. They were a traitor. They were they, they were calling them a traitor. They were there. There were so many high level guys. Everybody in there is super high level, are a threat to society because they can make a phone call. I, I even believe Chapo is in there now. The guy with the cartels. So. And there's no way out. You're stuck. And it's an incredible journey. So I think that's the end of my story with this ADX Supermax. If you people like this, like it, subscribe to it, and there's a lot more to come.